right, exciting day today. Oh, afternoon, sorry. Uh, we're a little, little delayed given all of the events. Uh, a couple of items for all of you at the top. Uh, today marks six months under President Biden's, since President Biden was inaugurated as President of the United States. Time flies when we're having fun, right everyone? Um, okay, uh, and this afternoon he'll be holding his second meeting uh, with the full cabinet. This meeting will be the first to take place in the cabinet room and the president will discuss several important topics with cabinet members, including COVID-19, the bipartisan infrastructure framework, and the Build Back Better agenda, climate, and a national security update following up from the Europe trip and our latest cybersecurity efforts, so a robust agenda. Since taking office, the President has acted to get America back on track by addressing the crises facing this nation, vaccinating America to beat the pandemic, delivering much needed help to American families, making transformative investments to rescue and rebuild our economy, and fundamentally showing that government can deliver for the American people. Of course, they'll discuss a range of topics at the meeting. Um, also today, top CEOs representing some of the most dynamic American companies across our economy called for support and passage of the bipartisan infrastructure framework. The CEOs from GM, Delta Airlines, Nike, Walmart, Bank of America, and more make up Build Together's CEO Working Group, which recognizes the need to invest in our national infrastructure and the positive impact the BIF would have on our economy for decades to come. Today, we also wish all those observing and celebrating Eid a safe and wonderful holiday. As many know, uh, the Eid and Hajj rituals are a reminder of the importance of providing for those less fortunate, particularly during challenging times, and Islam's commitment to equality and the common roots of the world's Abrahamic faiths. As mentioned in the President's statement today, the United States is committed to working with the international community to emerge stronger from the pandemic, and thousands of Muslim Americans are among those eager to perform the pilgrimage next year. Uh, finally, just wanted to note, uh, we support, um, but there's been, of course, some activity on the Hill I'm sure we'll talk about. We support Senator Schumer's efforts to move uh, forward on the bipartisan infrastructure framework uh, and very much appreciate the hard work until late in the night, including last night, by both Democratic and Republican senators to resolve open issues. Progress is continuing to be made thanks to all the hard work, uh, and we back Senator Schumer's effort to get this to the floor as quickly as possible. Amr, why don't you kick us off? Uh, Ego and Barak, to you. Um, an aide to uh, Speaker Pelosi tested positive for COVID after having contact uh, with the Texas delegation that's been around. Uh, can you confirm that a White House official has also tested positive? And I'm wondering, what does that mean for prospects of the Texas delegation being able to sit down with the President at some point at the White House? Uh, sure. Well, first, uh, let me confirm that yesterday a fully vaccinated White House official tested positive for COVID-19 off campus. In accordance with our rigorous COVID-19 protocols, the official remains off campus as they wait for a confirmatory PCR test. The White House Medical Unit has conducted contact tracing interviews and determined no close contacts among White House principals or staff or the President. Uh, the individual has mild symptoms. Uh, we know that there will be breakthrough cases, uh, but as this instance shows, cases in vaccinated individuals are typically mild. Uh, the White House is prepared for breakthrough cases with regular testing. This is another reminder of the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines against severe illness or hospitalizations. And of course, we wish our colleague a speedy recovery. In terms of a, a meeting, there has not been a meeting planned, uh, and there hasn't been change to that, so I wouldn't say it has an impact on that. And if I could uh, follow up um, on, on something that uh, you touched on yesterday. Sure. Um, vaccine, vaccination rates in Europe are pretty similar to what they are in the United States, but travel is one way right now. Frank, does the President believe it's safe for Americans to travel to Europe, but it's not safe for Europeans to travel here? Um, if you could, and there seems to be a little bit of mixed messaging that some may perceive. It. Sure. Well, uh, as you know, we regularly, the CDC regular up, regularly updates our travel guide, guidelines for international travel. Uh, I think they even did an update today, uh, and they provide guidance to whether it is safe to travel to certain countries or parts of the world, and of course, American citizens make their own decisions. As it relates to travel restrictions for, the, uh, for here uh, to come to the United States, uh, any decisions about reopening international travel will be guided by our own public health and medical experts. As we said, we've launched our interagency working groups with partner countries. Um, we are continuing, those are continuing to have discussions. They, those decisions will be made, be 
made based on public health guidelines. We don't see it as a conflict. Uh, we give American citizens guidelines. They make their own decisions about whether they travel to certain countries around the world, uh, and we will continue to be guided by public health guidelines on how we reopen travel to uh, within our borders. If I may ask just one, one brief more. Sure. Uh, yesterday's meeting with the King of Jordan, um, is the topic of the suspect in the 2001 Sabaro bombing that's still living in Jordan freely, um, did a call for extradition come up? Uh, it's a great question. I, beyond the readout that we put out, I have not had a further discussion with our national security team. I'm happy to ask them and see if there's more we can provide to all of you. Thank you. Okay, Kelly, go ahead. Have there been any other cases of breakthrough COVID among the White House staff? And would you commit to publicly confirming cases if others occur in the future? Uh, there have been. Uh, I will say that we, uh, according to an agreement we made during the transition to be transparent and uh, make information available, we committed that we would release information proactively uh, if it is commissioned officers. Uh, we continue uh, to abide by that commitment. Does this give you any sense of changing protocols related to the president, the vice president, other senior staff based on this set of facts, given the fact you've always said vaccinations, while very um, helpful, are not foolproof, so should there be a different posture for the president? Well, our, our protocols are in alignment with the highest standards and the guidance of our public health experts. So let me just remind you all, because I'm sure you don't have it handy, uh, to what those protocols are that remain in place. Regular testing of those surrounding and meeting with the presidents. Uh, for those who have closer proximity, they are tested more regularly than those who have less proximity. Ensuring those interacting with the president are following CDC guidance regarding mask wearing and distancing. Actively monitoring the health of our campus and the larger community in collaboration with public health and medical experts. We have a robust infrastructure to ensure compliance with these protocols. And we're asking staff to also monitor themselves for symptoms and stay off campus if they develop symptoms. So the news today is, is that while breakthrough cases will happen, the vaccines are effective and prevent against serious illness and death. We've seen that statistically across the country with 99.5% of cases in hospitals being for individuals who are not vaccinated. And we uh, will continue to abide by CDC guidelines. Briefly, uh, you did say there were others. Can you quantify what number are we talking about? How many breakthrough cases have you had? I don't have more details on that. I will see if there's more we can provide. You also talk about setting um, ambitious goals and assessments for a whole range of things on your agenda. Since it is at the six month point, how would you assess where the president's agenda is and how much has he accomplished in his first six months? And where are you concerned about perhaps being behind on some of his agenda items? Yeah. Well, first, when the president took office, he knew that his number one priority would be getting the pandemic under control. When he took office, there were more than 190,000 COVID cases and 3,000 deaths per day. Now we're at about 27,000 cases and 220 deaths per day. Is there more work to be, do, to be done? Absolutely. And we are continuing. We're, we're still at it and fighting the pandemic. But that was his number one priority since he took, when he took office. Uh, his number two priority, or they're both, they're, they're, they're uh, related, I should say, was uh, getting the economy jump-started. Uh, and that was uh, why he focused so uh, much attention and effort uh, and blood, sweat, and tears on getting the American Rescue Plan passed, getting that assistance out to the American public. We've seen uh, great progress. Millions of people are working today who are not working the day he took office. We would say that is a step forward. Uh, he identified when he took office four big priorities or crisis, uh, crises of his presidency. Uh, health, uh, the pandemic, uh, climate, uh, which we've made some progress on. There's a great deal of progress that will be made in the BIF and also the bipartisan, I mean, I'm sorry, in the reconciliation package and addressing racial injustice. Those are, an, uh, those are uh, crises and those are challenges he will continue to spend his time working toward uh, and making progress on. Go ahead. Thank you, Jen. Uh, more than 10% of the traveling party with these Texas Democrats now claim to have a breakthrough case. Is there any concern that this trip that was intended to advocate for voting rights is now a super spreader event in Washington? Well, I would say that's not a characterization we're making from here. We certainly understand there will be breakthrough cases. Even vaccines that are incredibly effective are not foolproof. They're not 100% effective. We've seen that. 
Here's the good news, though. We know that these vaccines, that these individuals, I think, if I'm correct, have, have been vaccinated. Uh, it means that it protects from death. It protects from serious illness. It protects, for the most part, from hospitalization. Uh, so that is a good sign. Now that COVID-19, uh, after contact with those Democrats, has reached the White House, what is your message to these Texas Democrats? Our message continues to be uh, thanks for standing up for voting rights and the rights of Americans to have their voices heard uh, at the voting booth, uh, and we appreciate their efforts in that regard. I've been Certain places are bringing mask mandates back now, including for vaccinated people. What does President Biden think about that? Well, Peter, we know that some uh, employers, hospitals, health systems, colleges and universities, which we've seen put in place mask mandates, some large and small employers have chosen to take this step. Uh, that's entirely appropriate. Uh, that's their decision to make. Uh, that's not an initiative where uh, we're instituting uh, from the federal government, but we know that companies, private sector employees, health institutions, educational institutions will take steps in order to keep the people in their community safe. Six months ago, the president asked Americans to wear masks for 100 days. As the Delta variant spreads, is there a possibility that he's going to make a similar ask down the line? Well, nothing has changed with the guidance that we are providing to the American public. If you are vaccinated, uh, you do not need to wear a mask. If you are not vaccinated, uh, the public health officials from the federal government recommend you wear a mask. Anything we would uh, determine would be guided by our health and medical experts. Go ahead. So I just want to back up here to this breakthrough case here mm -hmm. in the White House. You yeah. Confirmed today there's been a breakthrough case. Yep. But you're also confirming there have been other breakthrough cases. Yep. But you had not previously disclosed that there had been. And that's correct. We had also committed during the transition that I, I think there's hundreds, thousands of people who work in the federal government, as you all know. And we had committed during the transition that if it was a commissioned officer, uh, which who are the highest level ranking people in the White House and in the admin, uh, in this uh, building here, that we would make that information publicly available. We stand by that commitment. So if it's anyone below that, you don't feel the need to let people know. Well, again, that's the commitment we made. I'm here talking to all of you today and sharing with you information about the individual who was uh, who was uh, received a positive test yesterday. Right. More broadly, um, has there been any more discussion? I know you've been asked this before, but because it continues to happen, has there been any more discussion about having the CDC or some other entity track the number of breakthrough cases? They do track. Okay. Um, you have an eviction deadline coming, and there's an event tomorrow mm -hmm. on that here at the White House. I'm curious if you can give a preview of what may be coming in that meeting. I don't have any preview of a private meeting to share with all of you, no, at this point in time. And on the Cuba meeting that happened mm -hmm. last night, uh, it was a virtual event, a uh, handful of people primarily from South Florida. Has there been any conversation about having uh, other meetings on that here? Or what more might the president do himself on this issue, what he do or say, sure. I know the administration continues to monitor it every day. Of course. Well, uh, at the president's direction, uh, we are actively pursuing measures that both the Cuban people. Uh, that uh, that support both the Cuban people and hold the Cuban regime accountable. Uh, and that has been the prism through which the president has made his decision. So that includes working closely with the private sector and Congress to identify viable options to make the internet more accessible to the Cuban people. We're looking at options. There are a lot of ideas out there. We are also looking to leverage uh, our international uh, international organization partners to increase humanitarian assistance flows to Cuba and work with our international partners to uh, both voice uh, concerns and put public pressure on, but also uh, work with international organizations. The Treasury Department, via the Office of Foreign Assets Control, will continue to explore designated Cuban officials responsible for violence, repression, and human rights violation against peaceful protesters in Cuba. And we will form a remittance working group to identify the most effective way to get remittances directly into the hands of the Cuban people. On the last piece, I would note that what the President said yesterday, or sorry, not yesterday, last week stands, which is that there has been longstanding concern about uh, if you um, return remittances, if you return to a, a place where remittances are allowed, that that money or funding does not get into the hands of the regime or allow them to pad uh, their pockets. Uh, that's certainly something that we're mindful of when we're looking at uh, that will be a point of discussion in these working groups. And the president himself hasn't met with any of these people who've met with other White House officials. Uh, I don't have that. He, he has not. Uh, I, we certainly remain open to, as we are engaging at quite a high level. Uh, I don't have anything to preview in terms of meetings at his level, uh, but uh, you can 
until he's asked his team to take a number of steps and look into a range of options. Go ahead. Um, does the White House believe it has enough votes, um, that, that people have enough votes to pass the bipartisan infrastructure package tomorrow? What's the White House's view on that? Uh, well, we are not the vote whip counter in chiefs over here, um, but I will tell, I will reiterate uh, that we uh, absolutely support uh, the step by Leader Schumer uh, to move forward uh, today, or move forward, uh, yes, is today today? Tomorrow. Um, <laughs> what is today? today. Yes. Um, this, I would remind you all that this agreement was reached almost a month ago, and we believe that it's not only, uh, that not only is this achievable, we owe it to the families in red states and blue states who have waited so long for the improvements to their lives, uh, uh, that it, for, for this to have an impact. Less time wasted in traffic, ensuring every American, including in underserved rural areas, get access to broadband. I'd also remind all of you that what we're really talking about here, this is a, the bill becomes a law portion of our programming today, which I know you're familiar with, but it sounds esoteric, but this is a vote on a motion to proceed to a vehicle, not a vote on the final bill. There's nothing abnormal about ho holding a vote on a vehicle to allow consideration at this point. We fully support that, and we believe there should be support for it uh, tomorrow. Go ahead. Just a quick follow-up, thanks, Jen, on Kelly's question. So would the administration ever provide the number of breakthrough cases that have happened within the administration thus far? Should we not expect to receive a, a number on that? I said I'd be happy to check on the status of that, sure. And then on infrastructure, um, has the president leading up to this vote uh, tomorrow, Senate Minority with John Thune said there's no way they're going to get to 60 votes um, on this. So can we expect the president to be reaching out personally to Republicans? Has he spoken to Leader Schumer? And if this vote does fail, is that a setback? Well, for, yes, he has been in touch with Democrats and Republicans for several days, and that will certainly continue, and it will continue until he has both pieces of legislation on his desk to sign them into law. I think the question I'd flip back is, why not? This is a motion to proceed. It is not a final vote on the legislation. I'd also note that earlier this year, the same sequence was followed on May 17th for the Endless Frontiers bill with strong bipartisan support, in which there was a successful vote to proceed, and then the bill's text was finalized later because the substance was understood. Similarly, also took place with the anti-AAPI crime, hate crimes bill passed with strong bipartisan support. This is normal process and procedure on Capitol Hill. Those two pieces of legislation received strong bipartisan support. Obviously, there was strong support for motions to proceed. There are no secrets about what's in this legislation. It was agreed to in a bipartisan agreement. The only uh, disagreement right now is around some pay force, which we're working through and we're having discussions about. But uh, again, there's ample precedent and we support uh, Leader Schumer's strategy of moving this forward. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Jen. Uh, just a quick question uh, on the White House official testing policy. Sure. Uh, how is the White House preparing for vaccine hesitancy uh, to go up now that people who are vaccinated are still contracting the virus? I mean, do you expect that to really uh, stop people who are or, from getting vaccinated around the country? I don't think we've seen data to suggest that. Also, um, separately, uh, a question on the Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the chief of the Olympics said uh, that the game could uh, still get canceled at the 11th hour, uh, and we know that the first lady is, uh, uh, as of yesterday, was still planning to travel. Uh, but has that changed and now that this could you know, get canceled? What does that look like? Uh, there's been no change. She's still planning on attending the games. Um, and she looks forward to supporting, uh, of course, the athletes who are competing on behalf of the United States. We are monitoring the situation closely. Our team will be following very strict safety and health protocols, limiting engagement with the public, keeping our footprint as small as possible. Our COVID team at the White House, as well as health officials at the IOC and the government of Japan, all agree that the stringent protocols and health measures in place will help keep our delegation safe. And I would also note that the President and the First Lady felt it was important to have the delegation led at the highest level, uh, so she is looking forward to continuing her I, I travel. I have one on space. Uh, sure. Uh, I suspected. Just, uh, There's a little something <laughs> happening today, yes, uh, or happened, I should say. Right. He, so, he, so Jeff Bezos made a successful trip uh, to space and back. Uh, there is this growing capacity with uh, companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX. Uh, and uh, the Vice President obviously leads the, uh, the National Space Council. And we're wondering if there is any thought uh, being given to using uh, private companies by NASA more and more uh, to reduce the cost of space missions for the U.S. taxpayer. Uh, have, have there been any discussions on that? 
Well, first I would say if the United States is the first country to have private companies taking private passengers to space. This is a moment of American exceptional, exceptionalism. That's how we see it. Um, it will be the ingenuity of all of our commercial partners to help us continue advancing to the next of our uh, the next stage of our nation's space exploration and investments in space create jobs can improve life here on Earth through climate monitoring and medical advancements, just to name a few. So NASA is excited to see these achievements. Our charter requires that NASA's charter requires that agencies seek and encourage to the maximum extent possible the fullest commercial use of, of space. Uh, so we certainly support these endeavors. Wally Funk is now on my list of people that I would most like to meet in the country. Uh, she's America's new sweetheart. Uh, go ahead. A couple quick follow-ups on infrastructure and then one on COVID. Sure. Um, you said that the outstanding issues are, are paid for related right now. There were some spend side issues that they were trying to figure out as well. Are you saying that those are now wrapped up? It's wow. just paid for? Is that I was saying we'll leave it to the negotiators working hard into the night uh, last night and uh, continuing their work today. But uh, I would say that um, one of the issues or the primary issue, I think it's probably safe to say, is uh, around tax enforcement uh, on the wealthiest Americans uh, who are often able to game the system illegally and dodge paying the taxes they owe at the expense of everyone else. Uh, that was agreed to during the negotiations, but support has been withdrawn by some Republican members. We, we are happy to have discussions about additional options and additional pay fors That remains our policy and our approach. The point I was trying to make is that the components of what are in this package, the big pieces that were agreed to and where the president stood outside of the White House with Democrats and Republicans are not secret. They're very clear. Everybody knows what they are. Um, and that's the point I was making. Just for clarity, if the procedural vote, and again, I understand the vehicle and it's in the process pretty well. Um, if it does go down, the president's not walking away from these talks, right? Like the bipartisan effort is still the effort he's pursuing, even if Wednesday's vote goes down. Uh, I'm not going to predict a negative outcome. We'll see where we go, and we'll keep discussing where we go from there. And then just one more quick one. My colleague reported that there have been some high-level discussions, regular high-level discussions, between White House officials and Fox News about coverage related to the pandemic and vaccines uh, over the course of the last several weeks and months. Can you elaborate at all in terms of what those entailed, and if you guys feel like you've had an effect on the coverage of those issues? Sure. Well, let me first say that we've been in touch with every network and many, many media outlets about coverage of COVID-19 to make sure people have accurate information, to voice concerns when we have them. Uh, and I think you all know we're never shy when we have an issue with a story. So uh, that's really the frame we're looking at here. So uh, we uh, understand also the importance of reaching Fox's audience about the COVID-19 vaccines and their benefits. And like we are with all of you here today, uh, we of course are in regular contact. And we also make efforts to have officials out on a range of networks uh, to talk about COVID-19. We don't see it as a partisan issue. We don't see vaccines as a political issue. Uh, it's an issue about keeping Americans safe. Sure. Uh, go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, as, as the White House COVID team has done contact tracing, have you had any cases of staff-to-staff -staff transmission? Have you had COVID spread in the White House through these breakthrough infections? I would have to check with our team and see if that's been an issue. I don't have that data in front of me. Okay. And how many uh, commissioned officers are there? Like, what is the universe, what is the numerator and denominator? in breakthrough infections that you're willing to talk about? Uh, I'll, we can get you the exact number. I think that's publicly available, but we'll get you the exact number, too. Yeah, and, and just a messaging question. I know that you say there's no data to show that talking about breakout infections could affect people's willingness to get vaccinated. But does it create a messaging challenge for this White House to have breakthrough infections when there are people who say, why should I get the vaccine if I'm going to get COVID anyway? Well, I think that's a little bit of projection, to be honest. I mean, what we're seeing across the country is that almost 70 percent of adults are vaccinated. Uh, we're seeing especially high numbers among people who are over 65, over 55, et cetera. Uh, there are also some numbers I heard about yesterday that I thought were quite incredible. 86 percent of teachers across the country are vaccinated. Uh, we've also seen in recent polls, which I think was a bit of a wake-up call, I think there was a CBS poll out this weekend, that individuals who are vaccinated in this poll were more concerned about the Delta variant than individuals who were not, by a pretty large margin. So I would say part of our objective here is also to communicate clearly that if you are vaccinated, you are protected. If you get a case of COVID, it will be mild. 
Uh, if you uh, are not vaccinated, you could be, we hope not, but among the, the people who go to the hospital and get very sick from the virus. The data is very clear. So part of our objective is also not to stoke fear among people who are vaccinated because the data is pretty clear about their protection. Go ahead. So does the White House support using revenue raised by rolling back the Trump era uh, Medicaid rebate rule as a pay for for the bipartisan infrastructure bill? And if so, how much? I know there was some reporting on this today, and at what won't surprise you is we're probably not going to get into too many specifics of discussions that are privately happening between Democrats and Republicans to finalize the package. Um, so I'm not sure, Anne, I'm going to have much to tell you about where we stand on that, given there are private discussions. Um, Unrelated question: uh, Do does the White House know which Buccaneers players are back were vaccinated and which weren't? Uh, and are, is there any concern that the president would be standing as close to and shaking hands with unvaccinated players? The president is vaccinated, uh, and he that means is protected. Uh, we follow public health guidelines uh, and guidelines provided by our own medical experts. So did you the players or anybody with the team to provide information on who was vaccinated and who was not? We have certain protocols we have in place for visitors. I can see if we can provide those uh, more detail to all of you as well. Go ahead. I have an infrastructure question and, sure. then, and then a policy question. Uh, on infrastructure, uh, there are some top Democrats in the House, including Chairman DeFazio, who have been very critical of the bipartisan framework, uh, according to reports, um, and have pushed for it to include more for transit, more for climate. Uh, how is the President uh, talking with those leading House Democrats, and are you worried about having the votes in the House? Well, first I would say we are very grateful to the leadership of Chairman DeFazio and his efforts to move forward on important components of the transportation uh, packages and, and, of course, of the President's uh, initiatives and priorities. Um, you know, I, I would say we don't – we understand we're going to have to continue to communicate about every single piece of the President's uh, legislation and every single piece of his priority packages. And we don't know that we have the votes until we have the votes. Uh, but we are appreciative of his efforts. We're appreciative of his leadership. And uh, the next step here, as we know, is a vote in the Senate. On policy, uh, Secretary Yellen told my colleague Alan Rappaport uh, last week that tariffs are taxes on consumers. Does the president agree? I would have to look more at more of the context of her uh, comments, and I will see if there's more. Who pays the cost of tariffs? I, I would have. I have not seen her comments. I don't know the context of them. I'm happy to talk to her more about it. Um, go ahead. For asking a redundant question, but just to nail it down. Sure. The, the individual who did test positive is, in fact, a commissioned officer. No. Not a commissioned officer. Correct. Okay. Um, are you staff? I, we're not going to, out of the privacy of an individual, we're not going to provide more details. What I'm conveying to all of you is that a commissioned officer, we would proactively provide the details of those individuals to all of you. I'm glad I asked. Thank you. I appreciate you asking, too. Uh, Sorry, I didn't realize I was unclear there. No, uh, but uh, are you aware of any commissioned officers who have tested positive in a breakthrough case? If, if there had been, we would have released those names publicly to you. So all the others weren't commissioned as well? Correct. Right. Okay. In the office where this individual did work, is there any kind of surveillance testing that's that's being undertaken right now? Any? Can you explain what's going on in that office? Sure. First of all, um, there's ongoing there's contact tracing, as I noted, uh, and that has already commenced. As I noted in uh, in, in response to the first question, uh, we did our, our White House medical unit did contact tracing interviews and determined no cl close contact among White House principals or staff. Uh, this individual was out of the office uh, when they were tested yesterday, and they've stayed out of the office. Our staff is also regularly tested, uh, either, either once a week or more, uh, depending on their proximity to principals. Go ahead. Um, on Nord Stream, uh, yeah. we're, we're told there's a deal that's potentially imminent between Germany and the U.S. on the pipeline. Is, is, is there anything you can say on that? Um, and is the U.S. prepared to commit to not reinforce the new sanctions in the pipeline if Germany agrees to encourage investment in renewable energy in Ukraine? I expect that the State Department and others will have more on this soon. I would note that um, in the uh, following the President's meeting with Chancellor Merkel last week, we made clear that this was a point of discussion and that uh, the President uh, was planning to have a discussion about uh, the fact that we have 
uh, ongoing concerns about how the project threatens European energy security, undermines U Ukraine security, and the security of our eastern flank, NATO allies and partners, and that he and uh, had directed his team to uh, work with her team to see how we can address those concerns, even as the pipeline was 90 percent finished when this administration took office. And just uh, one unrelated issue. Is the President open potentially to unilaterally raising the debt limit without going through Congress? Is that something that's been discussed internally? Uh, the President expects the Congress will vote to raise the debt limit, as they have three times under the past administration. He would support doing it unilaterally. If they the, his, his intention is for Congress to vote to raise the debt limit. Uh, let me go to April, and then we'll go. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Two questions. Mm -hmm. One on a topic we haven't talked about in a while, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Mm -hmm. Where is that? We understand progressives may be now some of the holdup as it relates to that. They don't, if you're saying if they don't get qualified immunity, they don't want it at all. Then I want to ask about Haiti. Um, is there going to be an American delegation or someone from this administration attending the funeral of the assassinated president this Friday? And also, um, Greg Meeks, the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, said that he convinced the White House to stop calling for the elections to be held on September 26th to push it back because of the intimidation from gangs. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, first, I would say we would have we will have a delegation. Uh, it's still being finalized. As soon as it's being finalized, we will provide that to all of you. I will restate on elections what I said last week: it is that it is vital for Haiti's leaders to come together to chart a united path forward uh, to uh, to move forward with the election as soon as there are some as soon as they are confident about the public health and and from the public health and security perspective. That remains our position. Uh, and then your last question was about police reform. I would say, April, that. Um, the most effective role we can play from here is by leaving space for the negotiators to have those discussions. We understand there are a range of views of what this should look like, uh, and obviously uh, Congresswoman Bass and uh, and Senator Booker uh, and Senator Scott are the the primary negotiators here. We're going to leave them the space to continue to hopefully make and progress. I'll go back just once on Haiti again, um, the issue of the gangs, the intimidation by the gangs, voter suppression, if you will, in Haiti. What do you say to that? And is the, again, is the United States going to do something to help stand up those elections? Again, Condi Rice in the Bush administration traveled to Haiti under blue helmet uh, support from the UN, secure support, to stand up, to try to help to stand up democracy there. Is there going to be a move to suppress the gangs, to bring forward these free and fair elections? Well, April, from the beginning, we've provided, and I can get, get you the exact number, but I think it's around $75 million in assistance to Haiti, including for supporting democracy. Uh, and obviously, we're going to work with international organizations organizations to support in any way we can fair and free elections in Haiti. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just a, first of all, happy six months, and this is about that. It follow up to Kelly, what she was saying. Uh, I spoke to members of uh, the Democratic Caucus last night who think that even six months in, our democracy is hanging by a thread. Is the President aware of that sentiment among the Democratic Caucus, and what will he do about it? Well, I think the President has given multiple speeches where he has conveyed the risk that uh, a lack of legislation on voting rights and a lack of action on voting rights has to our democracy. So, all right, we got to move on, Brian, because we had limited time. Karen, go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Um, last week you talked about how influential somebody like Olivia Rodrigo could be mm -hmm. to get people vaccinated. Did the President ask any of the Buccaneers today to do any public messaging or anything coordinating with the administration on vaccines? I don't have anything more for you on private asks. I wouldn't have come directly from the president, uh, but if we have anything more to convey to you about COVID, uh, the use of celebrities in COVID, we will we will share more. We'll we'll have more. And one on infrastructure. The president yesterday in his remarks uh, said twice about the bipartisan package. We shook hands on it, and he repeated himself mm -hmm. for emphasis. Was he sending a message to Republicans that he expects them to follow through on what was discussed at that meeting and the agreement he said they shook hands on? Uh, he was making clear that he is going to stand by his commitment, and uh, like he said and did yesterday, he shook, they shook hands on this agreement, uh, and we're confident they're going to deliver because he stands by his uh, commitments and agreements, and uh, that's who he's always been as an elected official. Um, go ahead. Really, go ahead. Um, on the, I know you don't want to give them the specifics of the infrastructure negotiations on pay fors but how confident is the president that the bipartisan framework, when it becomes an actual bill, that it will be fully paid for? And how important is that to him? Is it a red line to him that it be fully paid for, or would he be willing to accept legislation that CBO says isn't fully paid for? Well, he's proposed a range of ways to pay for 
um, his proposals and his packages, uh, and those discussions are ongoing. I'm not going to set new red lines today, uh, but I would just say there's ongoing discussions, and we're uh, grateful to the work of Democrats and Republicans in being a part of them. Go ahead. Can you okay, I think we've got to go in a second. Can you elaborate on what you mean when you say regular testing for those who are close to the president? So is, is the president and senior staffers, are they receiving those daily uh, PCR testing that we saw a lot during the pandemic? I think we've provided this information publicly to all of you, which we can recirculate if that's helpful. But uh, I'm tested twice a week. Many are tested twice a week. Some are tested once a week. That's what I mean. We're all vaccinated. He's not tested daily. He's tested every two weeks, um, typically, or around every two weeks. Um, and uh, and uh, that's part of our protocols. Is there any need to re up that, the daily testing and letting the breakthrough cases? Nothing has changed about our protocols. I think what, what, what the big takeaway here should be is that. Um, we have protocols in place. They're stringent protocols. Uh, we, uh, they include a range of uh, requirements of our staff, uh, and they also include abiding by public health guidelines, uh, and that's something we'll continue to implement from here. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, Jen. Okay. Thank you, Jen.